Hello and welcome once again to the Forward Compatible Podcast. This is episode 90, part two. Dos. I think my arm went so high it was off screen, actually. Part two. Dos. For October 27th, 2013, my name's Tony. Joined, as always, by my fellow podcasters, Jason and Mark. <laughs> and what? He duck-lipped. <laughs> duck-lipped? Yeah, I duck-faced. It's great. Duck face. Um, and uh, sleeping. we will, we will be getting to Tony's topic of the week momentarily. But uh, I actually forgot to do this at the top of part he sucks. one. Yeah, so we're gonna do it at the part of, top of part two. Uh, we're actually gonna take five, ten quick minutes, and we're gonna talk to you guys a little bit and ask you guys some questions. Uh, as as Who's I just your daddy and what does he do? As I just mentioned, it where is, are the white women at? It is it is part ninety. And uh, so we just realized we're 10 episodes away from hitting triple digits. Our big uh, episode <laughs> 100 oh, extravaganza. And um, yeah, a little bit rambunctious. Read your fortune on the air. Thunder Tony's ass. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> well, now you definitely got to do it. Oh, Get up in that crack. You were talking at one point. <laughs> That's how it goes. Why is it pretty fucking touching me today? <laughs> All right, so we need um because apparently we're, we're uh, according to Jason's mom we're 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 gay so <laughs> no that, that's not my mom oh sorry it's Kim's mom Kim's mom there you go that's what it was okay so uh, <laughs> we need um some suggestions on what we're gonna be doing for for episode one hundred uh what we're thinking is we're gonna throw out. The regular format, right? For now. And uh, maybe we'll cover a couple of news stories at the top of the, the show because I don't want to get a week behind. Mm-hmm. And then uh, what we've been talking about forever, and we've mentioned this on, on the show before, is we'd love to have you guys be able to call in. Or we'll call you during the show because obviously you wouldn't know exactly when. We'd give you like a block, you know what I mean? We'll be like, hang out by your phone between... Or just for example, or like or seven whatever. or eight, yeah. seven to eight o'clock, we'll call you sometime in that period, mm-hmm. you know. And we'd love to have you guys. You guys can hang out as long as you want on the show, like you know, 10, 15 minutes. If you want to hang out for two minutes, just to you know, say something real quick and and get a question in or something, that's cool. If you want to sit there and chat with us for 10, 15 minutes, that's cool. And then we'll, we'll move through as many people as would like to. It might be a little bit of a longer show mm-hmm. that week, or it might not, depending I on... I also have this bad habit of, of putting my foot in my mouth a lot when it comes to overproducing yes. things on the show. But I like... I mean, it gives me 10 weeks to figure it out. Uh, I think we're going to do it live. We'll record it, and it'll go up also. I pee my pants a little bit. But I think we're going to stream it live. I don't, I don't think that could happen, could it? Yeah, I can't. Pee my pants a little bit. Why couldn't it? You can live stream to YouTube. You can live stream to YouTube. Uh, we have Ustream. Uh, we have Twitch. Uh, so we have we have options. And I have the connection speed to do it. To, okay. to live stream. So I, that it, it might happen. I'd like it to happen. And, and if you guys have any suggestions, please, leave, please, please, please leave in the, in the comments uh, below. Because I know normally a lot of people listen. They just don't comment too often. That's, yeah. That's cool. We read uh, comments. This is one of the weeks we'd, we'd actually really appreciate it. If there's something you guys want to see us do or try or something you want to see us tackle Angle. or a special guest or something you want us to, to bring back on, uh, you know, we can give any of the people that have been on the, the many, many episodes a call. We almost. Can, we, almost almost all of them. Yeah. Uh, so, like... She got Will R. That's stupid. I haven't seen Will R. Ever. Matt hasn't been on in some quite some time. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So like uh, anything that you guys want to try to contribute, we'll take it all into account because we're really, we're I mean we're still over two months away, but it's really only ten more times that you'll talk to us before uh, hand. So I want to I want to. We keep, got a lot of shit coming out in the next uh, next. Month. That yeah, we have a lot. Of, we have a lot of coverage, like with yeah. PS4 and and uh, Xbone coming out and stuff. That we gotta like. <laughs> we gotta try to get this like sorted out ASAP. I'd love to have a plan in place. Um, sooner rather than later. If you check uh, fwdcompatible.com, 
uh, which is our, our new URL for our website. Uh, there, there's actually an upcoming section where we're going to list uh, different things that are going on, the, some of the topic of the week's events and I things like that. I never posted that, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to get on that uh, it's ASAP. It's being written. We're, we're going to revamp the, the website a little bit and, and integrate it a little bit more into the show, too. That's what I, I want to do. Yeah. We're, we're, you can't make me. We're doing stuff and things. So... Yeah, any, anything you guys want to hear for us or any questions, because, like, we have another 10 weeks to answer them, then you could re-answer and all that type of stuff. So we have time to communicate uh, before we go ahead and do this. I think the live would be awesome, and I'm really looking forward to the, the calling, because, like, uh, like most of the, the, the our hardest core fans I've talked to at one time or another on, like, Xbox Live or... Or whatever, but some of them I've never even heard their voice. You know, mm. some of our most loyal listeners. I mean, they know what we look like and sound like, and like, you know, I feel like I've gotten to know some of you uh, quite a bit, but we've uh, never actually spoken. Fucking <laughs> 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 What did you do? <laughs> uh, so you know, it'd be nice, and, and I think it'd be cool. It'd be memorable. It'd be like a, a sweet episode to look back on, like something that you guys take uh, your time out of every week and we, we do appreciate it to, to listen in on the show for you to get like a little block where, you know, maybe we could ask you some questions for a change and we could sit there and interview you guys or, you know, you could get a chance to let us know what some of your favorite games and stuff to do is or whatever. Let us know a little bit about yourselves. So really, wherever you guys want to take them, I'd love to give you guys like 10, 15 minute blocks where you guys do whatever the hell you want. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You, you could just sit there and talk about games. You could let us know about yourselves. You could ask us stuff that... Real rapid fire, just whatever you guys want to do. I think it'd be really cool. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. get dressed up. Uh, and and like I said, I, I'm I'm gonna start looking into it and figuring out exactly what we have to do to be able to go live. It's not gonna be an every week thing. Uh, not with the current setup that we have. That is it's a big pain. Way, in the ass. Yeah, I it's mean, a live stream, record, mm-hmm. have everything go right. Fucking hell. Yeah, I don't even. I mean. Obviously, the live stream won't have any of the little cool banners or I mean, none of that stuff. Well, it's I, easy. I don't know how to do any of that. Good 10 weeks. Huh? Good 10 weeks. Yeah. Get out of that. that. It probably won't even have the song. None of it. We'll that, just cut in and cut out. I could probably get the song. Like the opening song. Uh, the, the, That's a song right? the actual video will have all that stuff in there, uh, but the live stream. Uh, probably We're also all gonna have to make sure you got to request that day off. Yep, we can't do that at like this time. Yeah, well, that I have be to off. be like I'll be off during the day, and luckily it's Sunday, so most people should have the day off work. So mm-hmm. it should be easy for everybody to call in with their uh, mm-hmm. with their whatnots <sighs> and sit around. Like we said, I think we'll we'll try to narrow it down where we'll actually. We have this bad habit where we're like, okay, we're going to record at 4 p.m. today, and we don't get around to it till, till 7. When do we start today? Uh, today? Yeah, tonight that happened again. Uh, but that, started at but, 8, I heard 7. 15. But that day, we will make sure we're on time because, like I said, if we figure we're going to spend 20 or 30 minutes on news and the stuff we do at the normal top of the show, uh, you know, we're like, hey, you know, we're going to call you first. You know, we'll, we'll be messaging you guys if you want to be part of the show and – We'll be like, all right, we're going to call you between 4 and 4.30, so hang out by the phone, obviously. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, the next guy will be like that 4.15 to 4.45 area. So we'll have it all kind of sorted out. That's why I kind of want to start getting the feedback rolling in on who would like to be part of the show and all that stuff. You don't have to tell us what you want to do yet. You could surprise us with it during the show. Just let us know if that's something any of you guys would be interested in, and we'll try to accommodate the best possible. I don't know if Skype will work the best or... Probably. Literally just calling them. I mean, I got free nationwide. Oh, yeah, I don't so care. I mean, one way or um, Skype, Skype would be pretty easy, though, too. But I don't know if everybody's got the equipment for Skype because you need a headset, you need a camera, right? You need don't a, need a no. camera. That's uh, just. I mean, in this day and age, you need your smartphone. Yeah. And yeah, you can no. get Skype on it for free. Okay. Yeah, um, you get one free call list. Yeah. Well, I mean, no, if you're doing uh, over, over. Oh, yeah, Skype, Skype, yeah, it's Skype, Skype it's, it's free. Um, but yeah. Uh, it, it shouldn't be too hard. Um, I mean, if we have to dial somebody in, that, that shouldn't be a problem. Um, literally, what I'm going to do is, literally. Yeah, is I'm going to take my phone, and I'm going to hook up a speaker to it, take and, news. and set it in front of the mic. Oh. And that way we'll be able to, you know, if we take have to call somebody or It'll whatever. It'll just record the mm-hmm. speakerphone mm-hmm. aspect well, of it. it. We'll have a speaker set up with the mic here uh, in some sort of way or fashion, and it'll project it. So, um, you know, it, it, it'll work. Mark and I ran one test on it a couple of months ago. 
Yep. Just yep. to yep. mess around with it. Yeah. Mark on. All right. You guys got anything else to say about that? Yeah, so send us in whatever you guys think, please. No nudes. Uh well, <laughs> uh, all right. That'll, of course, kick us off with. Um. So we had some uh, interesting perspectives come out of the mouth. Uh, we we. We, 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 on this show, do not spend much time on Call of Duty, as many of our uh, anymore. listeners are familiar with, and uh, you guys know why we don't, because we feel the way that a majority of you guys do, that it's just kind of like, whatever. Uh, I know, I don't think we have too many call, hardcore Call of Duty fans anyway, so it works Call out. Call of Duty 1. It works out Still well. Still God. Uh, but today... Even if you're not interested, I, I suggest you stick around for the topic because this one's going to be a good one. Uh, one of the gentlemen out of Infinity Ward, which is one of the two major developers for the Call of Duty series, came out and said that Call of Duty players are not part of the hardcore. And I thought this would make a very interesting subject. Not only for breaking down what he said and whatnot, but then kind of defining it. Because cause we do this an awful lot on the show. You know, we, we, we give a little shit to the, the, the bro gamers and we, you know, talk about the casuals and we all kind of consider ourselves hardcore gamers as I feel most of you that watch this watch or listen to the show do. Because um, the hardcore is more in tune with what's going on. You like hearing this kind of stuff. You like reading news articles. You're hitting refresh on the major... Uh, website publications and whatnot whereas you know what we would define as a a casual is just kind of like oh this game came out cool because they accidentally saw it at best buy wandering down the aisle and then they buy it you know what i mean uh so i thought we could kind of define that break break some barriers down all that kind of stuff and uh yeah maybe talk about the call duty effect in general yeah that was good yeah. 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 Real good. Yeah. Real good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Today's a weird fucking day, man. All right. So, what do we think about what this guy said? I probably should have brought up the exact quote, but I, I had, I had most of it. Sick, dude. <laughs> he ate my prize from episode one. If he has. Wow. Yeah, How I, bad did that taste? Good, right. Okay. Uh, Dog food now. It's been on the floor. Tony's been rolling around in his hand. Mm. He got mm. thrown all the way to your room. Yeah. Got shot. Very earthy. Very earthy. <laughs> Quite earthy. So he um, got AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> in my mouth. In his mouth. <laughs> AIDS, of, AIDS, mouth. AIDS <laughs> of the mouth. <laughs> Andy, you'll get that. I said it really quiet though. That's all right. Um. So what do we think about this this gentleman? Well, he's a, he's a gentleman. And, and a uh, scholar. And a scholar. And kind of a, I don't know, it's one of those things where if the quote's true, it's not going to really matter much because the hardcore... We'll the, never the, read it. it yeah, like the, the Call of Duty gamers will never read it. So it's like, it could even be a proving point, but it's... It's kind of take it what you want. I mean, do you take it as you know? Yeah, they're just they're they're gamers. They play one. They buy one game a year. You know, they're they play it. They know when the maps are coming out. That's about it. I mean, what else can they say? I guess. Um, for me, I think like I think he was on to something. Like, but he worded this terribly. Like, almost like insulting the Call of Duty fans out there. Uh, very poor choice of words, but the, the context behind it, uh, I don't think was that bad. Uh, was it, it was during an interview, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I, I don't think he was trying to be like malicious about it or anything. I really don't think that was his intent. I think he was uh, stating something that, that they know very well at Activision, that uh, they get a lot of people who don't typically buy tons of games throughout the year to buy their game. Uh, so they're not necessarily in the same bracket as the people who are picking up Dragon's Crown. You know what I mean? Uh, 
Like Mark said, they may only be playing a game or two a year. You know, maybe gotta get that man. Maybe they scoop up, yeah, call gotta duty. Get man. Maybe they pick up Madden. Like he said, maybe once every three or four years they give Halo a shot because it's another shooter. You know, and that that's it. That's what they gotta get that GTA. Mm-hmm. Yeah, gotta and get, GTA GTA is fucking really big that. too. But and we we goof around about them. We call them the the pro gamers. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with that. They're still gamers, aren't they? Yeah. Well, that that's the point that I want to bring up. Um, that's why I kind of have a problem with this quote is like, does it really matter um, as long as you're playing games? Like, I mean, well, like, why do you have to... And, and I look at it from a different perspective. I look at it that he, he's being more of an elitist, like, oh, you're not the, the hardcore. They, the, the games that you just named off, Madden, Call of Duty, GTA, are the top grossing games every year. And there's a reason, because they're the pinnacle of their particular fields Mm -hmm. yeah they cornered a market down does it really matter i mean as in my perspective as i don't care if you're playing and i know you know we we joke around like you said a lot on the show i don't care if you're playing kingdom hearts a jrpg call of duty madden you know uh, nba it doesn't matter what you're playing as you're you're a part of our community you we are all gamers in one way shape or form i don't care if you're playing a game on your phone or on your, your PC. I know we give Mark a lot of shit because he's a PC gamer. It doesn't matter how you play as long as you're playing and you're contributing to to the community. Okay. You know, and so, like, I don't, I mean, yeah, you know, and and I work retail, and, and I've dealt with these people, and, yeah, sometimes they're uneducated, and, you know, Call of Duty's the greatest thing in the world. Yeah, you're going to get that, but you get that for everything. You know, you get that for the Legend of Zelda people. You get that for the, the Gears of War people. I mean, everything. In every, there's fa- rampant fanboyism in everything. It doesn't matter what it is. 2K but, football is still better than Madden. I'm seeing, I know, like 2K5, you know. 2K5, best you know, football, football, football game ever made. Um, personally, I like Mutant League Sports, but um, it doesn't matter. Like, why do you got to call people out? You know, why do, why do we have to classify by names of, of what you are? You know, oh, you're the hardcore, you're the casual. Dude, uh, you know what the, the, one of my greatest memories doing retail is? Is having a, a 80-year-old woman come in. 80 years old. Was she lost? No. <laughs> and she came in, she came up with a wild time card. And I said, would you like a gift receipt for this? She goes, no, it's for me. That's you pretty know? cool. Uh, my, my, my girlfriend's dad, um, he plays video games. And you know what he predominantly plays? Madden and the shooters. Because that's that's just what he enjoys. He enjoys the the simplicity and, and, and you know, the running and gunning. If you give him something that's a little bit more complex, he gets bored with it because there's too much going on. He likes more of like a movie-style game where it's, it's very direct and to the point. I don't really see a problem. As long as you're playing games... You know, you're in the same group as all of us. I don't think that I'm an elitist because I consider myself a hardcore gamer, you know. I don't. I don't look down on anybody else because of their choice of, of games, their, their choice of video game lifestyle, if you will. Okay. Uh, well, you went off into a tangent and answered all parts of Tony's topic of the week right off the bat. Uh, so let's... Boost, thank since, you. Good night. Since he kicked it off, let's... let's and ended let's it. Let's start talk about uh, what defines the different... Uh, well, I was just asking you about the, the Infinity Words comments, not I, what you consider to... Um, I know, and, and I mean, and I apologize for kind of going off there a little right. bit. It's I've been good about this. I know you have. Huh? What did you say? He's like, I've been good about this. <laughs> well, well, no, no, it's, 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 it's cool. What you, happens when I'm not on my own show whip. for like two weeks? It's, it's cool. It, kick, it You kicked it off. Let's, let's define let's these... Break it down. Yeah, these different things, because... Um, I, I tend to agree with a lot of what you were saying, and I was actually going to bring up a bunch of that. So, so it's, it's good that you already did it. Like, uh, what? Okay, let's start with ourselves. What does make the hardcore gamer a hardcore gamer? What what gives us the 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 right to kind of if, frown if, upon everyone else? Well, if I can, really quick, nothing actually um, gives us the right to frown upon anybody else. But it's the same way that. You have your casual sports fans, or you have your your in in the term they use diehard sports fans. You know, you guys play fantasy football religiously. You know, you you stat track, you follow, you pay attention to what's going on. Someone like my girlfriend who absolutely loves football, 
just watches the Bears. Just doesn't care about anybody else, you know, or anything else going on. Just them. Um, for me, uh, with with wrestling, they, they have a, a term that they, they, they use. You have your casual wrestling fans are called marks. All right? No pun intended. <laughs> and then the, the quote-unquote elitist internets are called smarks. Smart marks. Okay? And, and that, just because somebody else is a casual wrestling fan and may not know... Uh, who Undertaker faced at WrestleMania 21 and where it took place? Anaheim, by the way. Um, things like that. It, it doesn't. It doesn't Smartest. matter as long as everyone together, you know, is, is enjoying themselves. To me, to me, I, I don't know the, the 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 entitlement and the elitist feel of it stems from, especially in our age bracket or people who are older than us, is because. When we, when I was younger, especially, and Jason could vouch for this, Mark, I don't know what it was like because you were born five or six years after us. Yeah. Five or six years ago. Um, <laughs> but when I was growing up, it wasn't cool to game. Mm-hmm. It wasn't popular like it is now. It wasn't as bad it was was in the seventies mm-hmm. and eighties where you were like that stereotypical, you know, sitting in your mother's basement and all that other jazz, but. It wasn't really that accepted yet. It was still a very new medium. I mean, I picked up the NES when it, that was like, you know, what I started on. That was only like really the the third major console release. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Ever and everybody still had a really sour taste in their mouth from uh, the video game crash that Atari caused. So it almost had become a forgotten medium, and the fact that I was doing it and a lot of my friends were. Uh, were playing and still do to this day in my childhood buddies uh it was it was different from what everybody else was doing mm-hmm. we were we were the minority at the time nowadays everybody games so it's not a big deal but um so i i almost feel like this on occasion as well it's like you know you kind of look not down on people like i don't respect I, I i make no secret of this i don't respect facebook games i don't respect 99.9 percent of mobile games and by mobile i mean uh, phone and tablet, not anything that's portable, uh, but because uh, they're not real to me. That that's junk. Uh, but uh, respect is wrong is the wrong word because I appreciate that that stuff is in the industry for for a whole new set of reasons. Like um, without that shit and without Call of Duty in particular and all these Facebook crap, you don't have. All the people that, you know, would be classified as a casual coming into our market. And the benefit of people, those outsiders coming into our market is there's, this is like a multi-billion dollar industry now. And because of that, more games are available. We talk about this all the time. When we were younger, there was like four or five titles a year. Two of them sucked. So you played your games longer. That's why everybody has those blinders on with nostalgia, they remember these games. Because that's all you played for six months. Now there's three games coming out every week. You know what I mean? And we get to that point because of how much more people are introduced into what we are doing. And because of that, like, Call of Duty makes so much money that it allows Activision to take a chance on something new on occasion. Men in Black. Where if, where if, um, where if they were limited to selling two or three million units of a game, and that would be incredible. Uh, instead of the 15 million units a year uh, of the of Call of Duty or something, uh, that's a lot of money that they can't play around with or take a chance on or hire more quality testers or all these other things that make our games better uh, every single year. So, like... Those are Square Enix. Those as, are failure numbers. Yeah. Uh, so, as much as, like, they do, in a sense, bug me... Uh, you have to understand that it's good for the industry to have all these people in there. So what do you think about... Oh, the, but to answer the fucking question, I kind of went off into a side thing. Uh, that's kind of how it is. Like, you, you, like now, like, that's my thing, video gaming. You know what I mean? Like, I still have a ton of modern day friends that I've been with forever that give me shit all the time. They're like, why do you game, dude? That's for kids and all this other shit. They don't get it. A ton of my friends. Really? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, you yeah. hit him right in the nuts? Huh? 
right in the balls. No, no, I just, I'm just like, sorry, a game. I don't try to defend it to people who don't understand what I'm doing. I, right I, in the balls. I get, I get the same kind of thing. And I, and I you, know, can, I, you have to get it with comics and, and comic wrestling. Books, and, rest, exactly. Like, I mean, I've got three negatives working against me right there. You know, it, 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 and and I draw a lot of parallels with, and I'll let Mark go in just a second. But if you think about it, wrestling had that boom in the '80s, just like video games did. Kind of dropped off a little bit, and now you know it's it's a big thing. And they used to go from four pay per views a year to one every month, to every three weeks. It's pay per view every three weeks because they can. Mm-hmm. That's what because I'm saying. so many people are involved in it now. You know, you your your roster used to be like you know, thirty guys. You know, you had your Macho Man's, your Hulk Hogan's, your Andre the Giants, Jake the Snake Roberts, so on and so forth. Now, I mean, they they employ. Thousands of people just to put on a Monday Night Raw, you know, and it, it's the it's the same kind of concept. And I, I've never really cared for the stigma that they put on comic books and wrestling and video games. It's like, what does it matter what you like or, or, or anything like that? And I got a lot of the shit, too, like you said. Uh, no, I still get it. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Constantly. And, and she's going to hate me for this, but one of the first times I went out with my girlfriend, I mentioned that I played rock band, and she belittled me for it. And I was like, this chick, <laughs> like, you know, she's like, oh, you do that, nerd. I was like, what's the difference? You play Halo. Yeah. You know, like, well, how does that, you know, how is that any different? That That's what I was getting at with this, is like, I still get made fun of for this shit, because I, I play seriously. And uh, then... Like, these same buddies who I've been lifelong friends with, uh, lately, they'll ask me. They'll be like, well, you know, I want to check out the new Call of Duty or check out the new Madden or whatever. And it's like, what do you think is better? And, you know, and usually I'll explain to them that the PS3 is better because it's a free online and they're not going to want to pay to play one game Mm -hmm. and all this other shit. And I'll kind of talk them into a big, you know, it's got a free Blu-ray player and all these other things. This last generation, whereas before Call of Duty hit... It was. I still get made the same people that have made fun of me forever just play that one game now, and that's cool. But uh, it 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 it's like they're encroaching on my territory. Mm-hmm. And that that's like I I almost do become a little defensive about it. Where like, because they don't get it. Like they they don't like. They'll complain about something, and it's just like they'll like start explaining to me, and I'm not that serious in the Call of Duty. I play them. Every year, but not like no. I you know I beat the campaign. I throw ten hours in a multiplayer and I shelve it. I'm done, uh, unless it's got a zombie mode. I stick around with those for a bit. But it's like then they'll start asking me shit about it because they know I know, but I don't know because I'm not. They think that you know just because you're, you're you're. I'm into games. I know the, the absolute every intricacy of that Call of Duty uh-huh. that year, and it's like, dude, I don't fucking know. And they're like, don't you play games? I'm like, I play real games. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Which is bad to say, but that like that's in, what I'm in a scenario like that where they're 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 putting you down because you're a gamer, and then they come to you to ask you, oh hey, how do I pass this? How do I do this? Then no, then then you know that you you deserve to give them a shot. Yeah, back. but 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 it's bad. I'm saying not to them personally. What I'm saying, I'm saying what is coming out of my mouth because at the same time, I'm just saying how yeah. we shouldn't be belittling them. Because they're making the industry better and more profitable, and it's employing more people who have more ideas, who bring fresh shit to the yeah, table. Yeah, but if they're, they're going to make it but, personal, then then they deserve it. You know? Yeah, but it, so that that's my stand. It's just like I feel like people. I think that's where the the hardcore gamer came from is people that are like minded like me that just you protect it's, the industry. It's our thing. Yeah, you know what I mean. And like that's that's why I take motion gaming so fucking personally too because like. I understand there's so many benefits to it, and I'm the minority because I despise it, and I'm one of very few people who do, most of which are in the same category as me, the, the hardcore gamers. And, like, you look at something like that, and you're like, you're fucking up my thing. You guys are messing with my hobby now. And and I get it. It brings in more people. It sells more units. All this great stuff happens for the industry, but it does affect me personally. Mm-hmm. You guys are taking good games away and putting good developers on making shit games for something that doesn't work or or you're taking time out of polishing and 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 uh testing to add a stupid like oh throw a grenade feature and that and that that does affect me and that 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 starts getting me mad and that's a direct result of people who aren't hardware gamers no i get it. i get you so i i don't know 
I'm kind of of two minds of this whole thing. What do you What do you think? Twenty minutes in. Go ahead, Mark. I, I know, honestly, because um, uh, to yeah, answer some of your backlog, yeah, it's great. It's great. Um, to uh, answer some of your backlog of questions, um, when I was growing up, I had the one benefit of. I was the last generation of offline gamers. Like PS2, after that, you're 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 talking about almost all online. Um, so like you know, N64, everything like that. And um, you know, I did, I was one of the few kids who I, I didn't um, hang out around uh, other like non gaming kids. Like if you look at like my like personal best friends, you know, growing up, like my next door neighbor, we played GoldenEye and anything on the N64 for the longest time. My, like, next best friend, I mean, we, he got the original Xbox, and, like, that's the reason I got an original Xbox was because, you know, he, he was showing me off all these shooters and sports and shit, so it was awesome. Um, and, you know, honestly, I, I think um, a lot of this is going to be missed out on because almost everyone has consoles now because it's not as unique as it. Like, N64, like, me and my neighbor had it. I didn't know anyone else actually in my, like, uh, my class you know most of your friends are from your your class at that point yeah. um and no one else really had that and like the first time i really even noticed anyone started to come out with games like the gamecube was like one of the first ones that i noticed that like my one friend who like you know he was, he was kind of like the cool kid in class um and then he got it and then like you know we, we started hanging out a little bit and i had one friend who had a dreamcast mm-hmm. one we all go to his house mm-hmm. so nobody else had it because i think it was like eight hundred dollars when it came out yeah so then I found out he had an N64. For, and then, when, when, when you're like a freshman in high school, okay, it's like $800. Yeah. Like you're still rocking your, your N64 at home playing, you know, Mario Kart. And this guy's like, look at this thing. Yeah. What's this little hole for? You know, that's a that's a great point. I think as time's gone, we were probably the one of the last generations of where it was not very accepted. And like nowadays what you were bringing up is is... is Really realistic. I mean, what like under ten year old doesn't have access Xbox to live and action and either a three sixty or PS three and in most cases both yeah. or you know uh, Angry Birds or whatever something on uh, anything uh, game wise. There's there's it's it's out there for everyone. You know, yeah, yeah I understand consoles. You know, most people have that now. I mean, that that accounts for all like ninety percent of the Wii sales where where people there's first something. time buyers. You know. Whereas when I was younger, it's just like Mark was saying. I, I remember, like, the NES, I knew, like, uh, two or three kids that had one. The Genesis, I knew one other guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it, it was The N64, I had two buddies with an N64. Then. That's what you it was. Go to a buddy's house. What games do you have, you know? Yeah. Trading, like, like, migrating. Yeah, like, you, you come over to my house, you look, you're like, all right, you know, I've, I've played 90% of these. Oh, hey, this looks cool. But, I mean, before, it's like, oh, my God, what is this? I've never seen this. Because you were only able to get two or three games a year. You know, yeah, wait yeah, for exactly. birthdays, Christmas. You know, and the occasion when you'd get to go to, like, a Toys R Us mm-hmm. and actually look at the games, you know, mm-hmm. when you had to bring a little card up to the little window to yeah, get there, your game. There was no there was no internet back then. There was no previews or reviews. Yeah. You had to wait for your Nintendo Power, which you was could, you couldn't get four in, months you behind. You couldn't get into Funko Land mm-hmm. without an adult. Yeah. It, it was it was it was messed up back then. So you didn't know about anything. There was no trailers, there was no YouTube. Video games did not have the money they have now where they can advertise commercials. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You'd get uh, once in a great while. Like like Nintendo could afford a Nintendo commercial. Yeah, like the Legend of Zelda when it's the first person and he's like on the boat and shit. Yeah. You remember that yeah, one? Yeah, there was there was no like there was no like every couple like now mm-hmm. pff, it's flooded. I remember seeing just this year Bioshock, Tomb Raider, Madden, NHL, uh, all I these commercials. I can't turn the TV on without seeing it's Call of Duty time. Yeah. You know, that, it wasn't like that back yeah. then at all. So, like, I mean, hell, uh, and, and I don't mean to, to go on it again. WWE has got a pay per view that's going on right now. You know how they show the little matchups usually? It's done in the video game. So, they have like, it's like uh, John Cena versus Alberto Del Rio, and it's their characters on the screen to promote the pay per view and the game. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, like you were saying, like, I remember some of the earlier Funko Lang commercials, you know, mm-hmm. the two hands coming out. They didn't even show you a video game. Or um, Nick Arcade, do you remember that? Did you have cable? Okay. Nickelodeon used to have like a green screen show when it was like kids jumping and it was like they were playing like an arcade game. Or the Saturday morning uh, Mario Brothers was the exception. Yeah. Stuff like that, you know. It was it was a kid's thing. It was a novelty back then. Yeah, but there was no way to get news. It was mm-hmm. so like unaccessible. Unexce- oh, yeah. I didn't have a, a PC until I think uh, probably 99, 2000 or something God, like I that. I missed GamePro. 
It was all word of mouth back mm-hmm. then. It, yeah. That's how you advertised your well, game. At least 10 years with uh, boxes on pictures. and mm-hmm. Yeah, and then people would tell you, this game sucks, this game doesn't, and like stuff would spread like wildfire. My, my first exposure to Sonic was, was at my cousin's cousin's house. Walked in and I'm like, what the hell is this? What what is that thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Star Fox for me is work? when I was hanging out with um, like the the cool kid in my class who all of a sudden was a gamer all of a sudden. So that's the only reason I even found Star Fox. Mm-hmm. All right, so back to what you were saying though. So what do you have, what do you think about the casual or the the hardcore? Oh, like uh, who are we going with? Like uh, we're still we're still on hardcore. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, good. Who, who the who they are? Tony. <laughs> um, like, is this? Uh, yeah, I, I even kind of forget the beginning of this. Is this like uh, how we define? Uh, who's yeah, like what, hard we'll take, yeah. What's your definition? Um, what's your definition of hardcore? How, how do you feel about the the? Honestly, I think it has a lot to do with um, segregation of gamers. I think it has a lot to do with the 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 buying that you do. Like, uh, I, I think you can. There's like we're a special breed, I guess, even in the hardcore where we are up on the news. I think there's still a bunch of hardcore gamers who just. They, you know, they have a bunch of series. They buy, I don't know, probably, you know, 20 games a year or something like that. And that's all they do. Like, I, I know, you know, I have a ton of my game stuff. They're like the hardcore new releases out. Cool, I'm coming in to get it. And uh, they then when they're there, they're still asking, you know, like the, the news from four weeks ago, you know. Uh-huh. And it's just like, it, it's... They're not on the up and up like we are. Like, next week... Walking Dead season two. Yeah, information. I mean, there's even like a kind of a segre- like a, a, a classing inside of hardcore. You got the hardcore and educated. You got the I play games and mm-hmm. that's my form of uh, you, know, you know. I get my gaming form and... once a month because I got this power up card. Yeah, kind of deal. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's a, that's a very interesting point because when I when I boil down the hardcore gamer, there is more to it than I think it is tiered. Where I think we're almost like the. The, 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 the niche of the niche, yeah. It's, well, it's, I mean, it's of bad course to we say are. We're doing a video game podcast. That's what I'm saying, though. Yeah, like, we really are. We're, like, I can't tell you how many, how many hours I spend every day. I'm, I almost apply. I open up IGN like three times a day at least. I almost apply. Yeah, yeah. I almost apply as much time into the, like, the culture. The research and, and just... Yeah, research and reading and commenting and playing on uh, Thinking forums. about it after reading it. Yeah, and all, this, <laughs> and all this other stuff and texting these guys about, like, oh, did you see this game's coming out? I spend so much time doing that. Almost as much as I physically play the I games. would say, uh, for me, actually, because of my weird schedule, and I'm including this into the non-gaming portion of the culture, I spend more time reading news doing a podcast, talking to friends about it, and reading Game Informant than I actually do playing games on a week-to-week basis. That's what I'm saying. And I think that's that's a special breed, whereas I know I know what Mark's saying, too, because I know a lot of buddies like that that I would consider a hardcore gamer. They do, I don't know about 20 titles. I know you're just throwing a number yeah, out yeah. there. But, you know, they might pick up six, seven games a year. Mm-hmm. They're, they're like, like I, I have one of my buddies uh, who I've been actually wanting to get on the show. He's perfect in that category. Mm-hmm. He texts me like once or twice a week with just easily Googleable stuff that's, you know, like easy questions, you know what I mean? But the kid picks up like 10, 15 games a year. He does play a bunch of big yeah. titles. But he's not sitting there on on video game websites. He doesn't care. Reviews. He's not watching E3 and then analyzing every little last second. It's just like, oh, the new game's in the store. Cool, let me try this out. And plays it. Mm-hmm. And he plays an awful lot of games. He doesn't stick with just like, oh, I only play military shooters or I only play sports games. I mean, the guy's, you know, getting getting weird off-the-wall stuff, too. He's mixing everything up. And to me, that's what encompasses yeah. the hardcore gamer. Yeah, there's different tiers, but it's just... You have to be able to... to it's a time sink, really. I mean, you know, I mean, I think of a lot of people, maybe, uh, assuming uh, we would consume uh, or uh, put into, like, the casual, I, I mean, there's probably a bunch of people who, you know, if they had more time to, you know, do everything, that they could easily fall into more hardcore, um, you know, you know either following of uh, the news or just, you know, picking up more titles. I think uh, uh, we, we, you know, probably negate something that, you know, some of the casual people, you know, would... Uh, you know, like cleaning and, you know, I don't know what, I don't know what, I don't know what those people do. But um, I think it's a, a, bathing. a time sink. Yeah, bathing, you know. General uh, hygiene. Cooking. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. They do some stuff. Um, All right. So so before we... So I think we've touched hardcore and it... Okay. So that's hardcore. Now, 
I'd actually like to go on the other end of the, end of the spectrum before we figure out what encompasses a gamer. So what do we classify as these casuals then? I know you've already been quite vocal that you just kind of... No, I'm, but I mean, I can give it a little bit more detail. I mean, like just because uh, I have such a strong stance on what he said, I still think that that you do have your your separation in in classifications of of people. But I think you know everybody's a gamer. You know, um, as far as casual, um, you've got a couple different. Again, it's it's tiered. Okay, you've got uh, the person that will pick up two titles a year but owns a major console. Um, you've got somebody who will just play games when they come over to a friend's house, because I know a couple people like that. Um, you've got strictly uh, mobile gamers, uh, Angry Birds, things like that. Um, that that's my classification of the the casual gamer. You know, the so there's a there's the family social gathering gamer. Mm-hmm. You know, like hey, we're gonna play some Wii Sports. You yeah, know, stuff like that. Um, and like I said, uh, I would even I, it, the people who pick up Call of Duty once a year, even though they play it religiously for a year, they, they kind of almost, I guess you know. It, it's hard to say because they're they're putting the time sink into it though. Mm-hmm. So I know you, that, that's what I, makes I, it I don't hard. even want to put them into a casual, but you also don't really like they fall out of the kind they're, of like a they're, low they're end hardcore. gray area. Low they're, end they're, hardcore. Yeah. Kind of See, I don't. I don't think the guy who just plays Call of Duty is a casual. I think that's why we even just call them bro gamers because we're giving them more respect mm-hmm. than a casual. Because there's that's nothing. Casual. There's nothing wrong. Like there, when you really boil it down logically, there is no difference between playing twenty campaigns one time throughout the year or sticking three hundred hours into one game. They they are a hardcore Call of Duty player. Can I can I ask you know, like, pose yeah. a question to you guys really quick? What if, um, what if somebody plays just Plants vs Zombies, but has invested fifty hours into it? I don't. Um, yeah, that that I know that's that's a cool what if, but it's just not true because I, I had the stats last week, I think it was, or two weeks ago, where we saw that. Cell phone gamers are like yeah, sixty I'm, seconds. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I get, I get that. And they're but, out. Well, yeah, but but no, that, that that's like at sixty a time. seconds a day, a day for, but like you know, yeah, a year. But yeah, exactly. What if what you know? For instance, and and again, she she doesn't count in this classification. But I'm gonna give you a prime example. Is, is my girlfriend doesn't play video games every week, but she's always playing something on her phone. She probably has forty hours into Plants vs Zombies. There's weeks where my mom probably scares me with probably how much she does because every time I'll come mm-hmm. home, she'll be doing Facebook gaming. My mom's huge into Facebook mm-hmm. gaming. Uh, and there's weeks where, you know, she's waiting for that, that you know, the time to go by so she gets another stamina point or, you yeah. know, over the game. Yeah, I, I, I mean, and I she's got that. a ton of different ones she's playing. So, But, I mean, I, again, I'm not trying to start. No, no, no. Just throwing that I, this is a great, this a great, great thing. I think, I think the, like, when you're looking at it like that, the, the definitive line is whether or not they personally consider themselves a gamer is very telling like my sister mm-hmm. uh hasn't played video games since our nes she yeah. used to try when we were younger left it just it. wasn't her thing yeah now that cell phones are out she's playing candy crush and all this other crap mm-hmm. and all you know whatever uh but if you ask her does she play video games she'll be like no i play candy crush mm-hmm. so the fact that they're in their own head and see as as in my my for kim she would. She would. She goes. Yeah, I play video games. You know. So she's a gamer. Yeah. I, I think that. I think that's like almost like. It's how like you your mom. Yourself your, kind your, of thing? your mom too. Uh, you said she plays some Facebook games mm-hmm. occasionally. If you go, mom, are you a gamer? She'd probably be like, no, I just dick around on Facebook once in a while. Yeah, she'd probably say that. I think that's a very tell. I don't. I don't think that's the the be all end all. That's what how they determine it is. But I just think is. if someone themselves acknowledges how like limited in depth the games that they're playing are like candy crush or, or bejeweled and and uh farmville farmville and stuff where they don't even where they don't even consider themselves a gamer i think that's very telling that they are in the casual camp mm-hmm. you know someone who picked up we the Wii just to play we sport i'd almost go as far except the Wii screwed everything up hey i would say i would say that i picked up the Wii just to play Wii sports because that's basically like, all that, that more but, part. But, I, like, the Wii, don't count this in my statement, because if the Wii never existed, this would have been a great 
uh, telling sign is if you don't have a console or a PC to game on, you're a casual. Because that would have eliminated all the, the Facebooking crap and mobile devices to me, which are garbage too. Uh, but if you took the time to go out and buy a console, you can at least be considered a gamer. But the Wii made that statement untrue now because a lot of people did, like you say, pick that up just to play Wii Bowling. Not even all of Wii Sports. They saw somebody do that. Yeah, bowling like, was the shit. That's oh, that's insane. cool. And they paid the 200 that's bucks insane. to play Wii Bowling, you know? Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that, but, you know, those people are clearly casuals to me, at least. Anything else about casuals? I, 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 think, I think we hit some good points with yeah. casuals. So, what encompasses the gamer, though? Then this is going into that gray area you were saying. Uh, the hard part is is putting a definitive stamp on on what what falls into that. Uh, I almost want to say it, it's it, it's very similar to what the person classifies themselves as. You know, it's kind of like, are you a gamer or are you not? You know, if you're not but you still play games, then I agree you would fall more into that casual line. But if you go, no, you know, I play this and I play that, you know, I, I don't get to play as often as I like, you kind of, you know, I don't know. I personally would say, I, I would like to say that almost anyone who is doing any type of gaming can consider themselves a gamer. It's whether you put the label on it, like Jason mm-hmm. was saying, that, you know, some people look at, you know, Tetris. No, it's not a game, so, you know, so it's a puzzle, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, so, something like that, where it's... It, even though you're being played on an electronic device, it's it's a, a puzzle. It's you know bejeweled. You know it's it's just your moving thing. It's you know uh, not a lot of uh, interaction besides that. Yeah, it's 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 like interesting. Like I'm I'm fumbling to even put it in perspective in my own. It's very brain. hard to kind of you know like yeah. like I'm struggling with like this you, a lot. You're arguing with yourself a little bit. Yeah, I, I'm contradicting my own mm-hmm. points. Yeah. Like the way I'm trying to explain this, but like I know what I'm. Th- I know I could tell right away, like in my own head, I can label people quickly into their 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 gaming category, mm. and I want to get to does that really matter? That's where I wanted to close the show out. Well, like like here's week. here's in here's minute, but, yeah. something for you. Uh, I have a a, a friend, uh, Dave, who was on the show uh, the Blacklist last week. Dave's. Uh, See, uh, his gamer score is not that high, and I, I know that's not really a, a good example, but I'm going to use, like... A little bit of it is, actually, it, it, But he's, uh, and Dave, I'm not calling you out on this, uh, his gamer score is nowhere near what mine is. Mm-hmm. Okay. But he's invested. I think I think when he I was talking to him the other day, he said 60 hours into Skyrim mm-hmm. already. You know, so it's like, to everyone else, you look at that and go, oh, pfft, you know. Just sixty yeah. hours. I, you know, you no, can't. no, you don't even you don't even see that because they don't give you that stat. That, no. then you look at somebody's uh, achievement list, That's and you go, Pfft. You if know? they if they yeah. only pick up COD every year mm-hmm. and don't touch the campaign, there's they no get... achievements in the multiplayer. Mm-hmm. They could pour a thousand hours a year in exactly and have a gamer score of three hundred. Yeah, you know, and, and I know plenty of people like that. Uh, you know, that that have very low gamer scores, mm. but they they're not playing the game like me. If there's a cool achievement, I'll try to go for it, but I'm not a completionist. I'm not an achievement whore no. or anything like that. One of the ways I'm looking at it is a true gamer, uh, I, I should say a hardcore gamer, is looking for that high gamer score. Mm-hmm. They want That's something that they want to show off. So gamer score is also a way of even... I almost wish that... When, when dividing came, them. Well, yeah, exactly. It, it, it kind of... It, it gives them a title mm-hmm. or entitlement. Uh, I almost wish that, like... When you look at somebody's gaming history on, let's say, Xbox, okay, and I, I click on Dave and I can see his achievements compared to mine, but then, like, see some more in depth stats, like how long has he played? Let's just kill the depth. Yeah, stuff like that. Like, I'd like to see more information like that. They're, they're start- I think that would, that would kind of. They're starting to implement those a lot. It started with Halo Waypoint. Yeah. And it grew because now Call of Duty's got its own set. In, GTA's uh, got one. Whatever. And and, like and, Do you know Battle, started Battlefield, it? Battlefield huh? launched one last year. Battlefield 2 started that. Yeah. But I mean, that would kind Back of... In if, if that became the new five, standard, I think I think you'd have less of this elitist bashing where you can actually go, well, okay, you've only got a 1,000 gamer score, 
but Jesus, you you invested sixty hours in a Skyrim. You're a gamer to me, then. You know, mm. I don't care what your achievements say, and I know that's not really one of our bullet points, but I think that's a big thing in it. We look at achievements like, oh, we got to get them. You know, we that that that's kind of like your your badge of honor, if you will. Yeah. But then there's these people who don't care about achievements and invest just as much time mm. as we do into a game. You know, Dave. Dave is a prime example. Dave is still playing uh, Arkham City because he's trying to get one more achievement in it, the the 100 hit combo thing. Mm. Too hard. But he's still playing it, you know? And, and I, I, I put that game down three weeks after it came out. Mm. That doesn't make me more of a gamer than him because I finished it first and I moved on to something else. He, if anything, invested more time into the game than I did. Yeah. Christ. Ooh. I mean, it's mind. it's like it's like you almost want to say variety is 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 kind of the defining moment, but it's not because it's like they're saying if you pour a thousand hours a year into Call of Duty, I consider you a gamer. You're not a very diverse gamer, and you're missing out on a ton of great games. Yeah, that that's a, that to me that's a whole different but, spectrum. But yeah, that's fine. But like you almost look at it like diversity diversity. Doesn't mean you're not a hardcore gamer if you don't have a diverse portfolio. Mm-hmm. But if you have a diverse portfolio, I feel it definitely throws you into the hardcore gamer sure. set. Where if you're like uh, here, here, let me let me let me put this in in, in real world terms. And I'm gonna but I'm gonna, I'm gonna play a little game here with you. You uh, uh, are an alcohol connoisseur. Yes, I, I like to think so. Okay, <laughs> and I'm not saying anything bad here. I'm, I'm being completely honest. I don't mind. I drink a lot. Tony, and, and I'm sure Tony tries a lot of different things. I do. As to me, I know what I like, and I stick to that. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Now, does that does that, that make you? Uh, if we go out the same amount every week to a bar, but because you drink more. Uh, diversity that doesn't make you more of a drinker than me or or anything like that. I could be drinking, you know, Shirley Temples. That that that's a different story, you know. But that that's what I'm getting. Yeah, at. it doesn't necessarily mm-hmm. make you less of a drinker. It just but means the you're fact more that I, yeah, the fact yeah. that I have diversity makes me a more hardcore mm-hmm. drinker. That's how I think the games are. Like, it's it's okay. There's nothing wrong with playing COD or Gears or Halo. These huge franchises or Mario Brothers that are the biggest staples and corners of our industry there's nothing wrong with playing those or just playing those but it i think you're definitely hardcore if you're the kind of person that's out there getting like puppeteer or dragon's crown or fucking the wolf uh, the wolf among us yeah shit shit like that that's just like that isn't halo and that and when you play journey yeah and you're playing all this different shit i think you're clearly a hardcore gamer i think that's the one definitive I can come up with. Mm-hmm. Even though if you only play one or two games a year, it doesn't necessarily mean you're not hardcore. Mm-hmm. I think I think another aspect, if I had to define a hardcore uh, gamer, and, and I should have brought this up before, would be um, retro games. If you go back and you play the classics and things like that. Like me, I'm, I don't have a, a very big library anymore, but I still have my, my NES. It's sitting under my bed. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, they released this past year Tony Hawk's HD Remix. That was a day one buy for me. Things like that. Mm. Um, uh, Kingdom Hearts, even though that's that's a newer title, you know that would for me that would set you apart a little bit mm. and because you have that that history with it, I guess, yeah. as opposed to just playing the same game every year. Yeah. I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I would say for for me, one of the defining characteristics is uh, in the individual person. Do do they consider themselves a hardcore gamer? Mm-hmm. While you you know you can definitely um, argue the you know the high level hardcore gamer or the low level. I mean, that's just always going to be a thing. Is does that person that individual person do they consider themselves a hardcore gamer? Mm-hmm. I think if you can say you're hardcore, it's like something. I mean, usually that's not to be taken you know lightly. Yeah. You, you generally have a a care, and you 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 enjoy, really enjoy the the median. How many how many Steam games do you have? Uh, like two sixty. And I have five. Does it make Mark more of a gamer than me? Just means I like to spend money on Steam. Take my money, Valve. Yeah. No. See that that's the thing is, do they even care the casuals? Because like, no. 
Th- that's the thing. They're like, just enjoying it. They're just playing the games. They don't give a shit. It's the, it's the elitist. What, what we're labeling them as. Mm-hmm. They don't give a fuck. They're just like, oh, I'm playing Call of Duty. They I don't, don't even think it's us. I mean, and we're we're hardcore gamers. It's well, the you, you have you have one tier above us, and that's the elitists and the the diehard fanboys. Yeah. Okay. Like, okay, you can boil this down because now that you brought up another analogy, I think that's a great way to look at it, too, with with movies. Movies is something everybody enjoys, kind of like games. Because it doesn't doesn't matter. It doesn't, like, everybody can be a gamer, like what Jason was saying. Uh, They might not all be digitalized and have buttons, but, like, chess is a game. And and Tetris or Scrabble or or cards, like like, like poker. Magic. Those are games. You know what I mean? Uh, they're not all digital and you don't play them all on a screen, but everyone, from the beginning of time, there's been games like Backrack and fucking mm-hmm. uh, Backgammon and uh, that game with the little stones. What the fuck's it called? Um, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Jacob's Ladder and all that all that old school stuff. Those are games. Shoots and Ladders. Yeah. Um, so, like, everybody enjoys movies, but then there's those people who are... Would consider themselves movie buffs. I don't consider myself that. I don't go. I don't go spend twelve dollars three times a week to see every new every new movie that gets released in theaters. Anymore. Because like, but there are people out there who do, and they and they look down at us. Oh yeah. The same way, like I'm. I'm a. I'm a total Netflix guy. I used to go to the theater a lot more when I was younger. Nowadays, I used like to go two times a week to the theater yeah, when I was younger. I'm very okay with just waiting for something to come to Netflix. Mm-hmm. It's not a big deal to me. Does that mean I'm less of a movie watcher or less of a? I team? definitely am because I wait for the Pirate Bay. So okay, but exactly. Yeah, no, Does does that make us less of movie enjoyers? No. If anything, so I mean, so from, why from so my, why are the casuals less of? For, from my opinion, uh, like a prime example is as. Uh, the Hobbit. I don't like sitting in the theater for three and a half hours anymore oh, watching a movie. I still I, do. I'd rather be in the comfort of my own home. Mm-hmm. Okay, I can sit in my shorts and rip ass and pause the movie to go that, to the bathroom. About, the and, only thing that yeah. is just inconvenient is the the there's yeah. no pause. Mm-hmm. And what they used to do with movies way back, I, I don't really know of anyone that does it now, but um, they used to do, they used to give you intermissions, mm-hmm. they used to give you uh, hour um, and a half mark or bathroom break I went and minutes. saw the, uh, completely off topic, but the, uh, the Fellowship of the Ring, the extended cut, they were playing it in the theater, mm. and they actually had a 15 minute intermission, because the movie was like four and a half hours long with all the extra footage. Put yeah. In. So, and, and the rule is, is, is uh, and it's actually, uh, in the movie industry, if the movie runs Four hours, mm. you have to give people, there has to be an intermission. Mm. With music's another interesting area. Like, there's the, the hardcore connoisseurs that are at the local clubs that are playing bullshit ads that nobody's ever heard of that are just getting their start. And they're they're there every weekend trying to get the, the early head start on the next up-and-comers. And, mm-hmm. Or there's just people who turn on the radio and like music. Does that mm-hmm. mean they like music any less? So I, I don't know, man. This, this, but you'll this always, is, this is you'll fucking always weird. Have, you'll always have, whether it's movies, music, video games, uh, books, food, books, wrestling, you're always going to have your upper tier elitists turning their nose down on the casuals. And the casuals don't give a fuck. And, and, and no, they don't. They're I don't obli- care that people... A, they're oblivious, and B, they're probably, because they're so oblivious and, and they're not as jaded as... as the elitists are, they're going to spend more money. Generally speaking, your casual moviegoer is going to go, I, I think the, the last statistic I read is uh, the gen, generally um, a, a family spends $130 a month at the movie theater. Hmm. That's a lot. It's a lot. When, with the average family's uh, 2.5 kids plus husband and wife. And at the cost of movie tickets expensive. plus concessions. It's ridiculous, those half kids. Pl- well, I'm just saying plus no, concessions. No, no, no. <laughs> You know, when you think about it, it it, it makes sense. That's one, maybe two movies a month. It, yeah. You know, when's the, I bet you can take every movie that Tony saw in the past two years, and it wouldn't equal $130. I've only for me either. I've been to the theater like three, four times in the last three, four years. <laughs> I know. It's like Dark Knight, Evil Dead. <laughs> it's just like, uh, and the other ways I want you to join the stubs. I used to go like, constantly, but this was, again, before the internet and mm-hmm. Netflix and... and 
easily available shit. Like, I, I remember thinking Redbox was the most badass thing in the world because I was used to Blockbuster, which was 4 or $3.99 for a movie for two days. Mm-hmm. And that was a great deal. Or the one-day rental? And then, and then Redbox came along, and it just... A dollar. One dollar. It was it was awesome, and then Locket change, and then shortly after that, like I feel bad for Redbox. If had Redbox come out a couple years earlier, they would have been even bigger than they are now. But then, it's unfortunate that Netflix started taking off right around the same time as Redbox, and it instantly killed it almost. Well, like no, I, I, see, I, I know it's off topic. Redbox is still doing. Very they're doing well very well because they not, offer. They're not they, doing Netflix well. No, but they they do <laughs> offer, uh, a, in my opinion, a better selection of movies because. Generally speaking, a movie when it comes out, um, it's twenty seven days, twenty two days before it hits Redbox. Sometimes that movie won't be on Netflix for a year. Yeah, but you could do the disc delivery thing on Netflix. Mm, nobody, nobody does that. Um, do you do that? Not anymore. Do you do that? Yeah, I, was gonna say, I, I moved I mean, all the way over to exactly. streaming only. Yeah, streaming only is great. Uh, but but you look at that, and that's eight dollars a month, and you literally have access. A bunch of them are garbage, but you literally have access to like ten thousand a month. Do you have the four person? Yeah. Um, but I mean, you're, you're literally have access between TV shows and all their episodes and movies to like over 10,000 things to view at any given second, mm-hmm. which is only twice the price of what it used to cost to rent one video from Blockbuster for two remember nights. The, remember the $8 video games? Yeah. yeah. It's fucking nuts. I don't know. Four day rental for a video game, $8. But anyway, uh,. So gamers, I don't, I don't fucking know, man. I, 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 I was so sure of this before we walked in, and this, some more questions this, than this topic of the week has just raised more, more questions than it's answered. I think. Uh, you know, I, and I hate to bring it up, but it's almost like the same thing with people's sexuality. It's like whatever you choose to be, you know, it's it, that's fine. Do what you want, you know. You want to call yourself a gamer, even though you play, you know, Farmville and Angry Birds. Go right ahead. You're not hurting us, you know. Yeah. It's it's not making us look any worse, you know. Do what you want, you know. And and people out there that you're an elitist prick, go ahead and continue to be an elitist prick because the casual people don't care. But when you have uh, going back full circle, when you have this guy coming out and saying that, what, what was the exact quote again? Because I oh, forgot. Yeah. Uh, it's what he said. Call uh, of Duty players Call of Duty are not aren't hardcore. Aren't hardcore. That's bullshit. It, it really is. Just because what? Because you, you you only buy... Your game. Your game. And, and But that's the thing, though. They buy the game. They usually buy the Elite. Yeah. Generally speaking. That, that had a really high attach rate. Yeah. They buy all the Call of Duty merchandise that gets put out there. The headsets, the t-shirts, the, the, like... They wear their extra shit with weapon pride. camos. That they wear came their, out this year. They, they really do. Like the, the Call of Duty players, they, they have no shame going. I play Call of Duty. Mm. You know, they they don't. I heard the call. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but you know, like it, it, this guy just it's it's stupid. Like who cares what you classify yourself as as long as you're playing video games? These people that you say aren't hardcore gamers are the ones putting food on your table or work. I don't think he meant it like that. I really he might not have. I have to I, I have that cynical outlook on life where I you know maybe at, he views it as you know hardcore gamers are the guys who are like us where you know we're it's, informed. It's, and it's, he I might mean, have meant that. It's, it's a possibility. He might have meant that the guys buy uh, you know 10 games over mm-hmm. might have meant, you know. Again, uh, w- without further definition we can only speculate and my mind instantly goes to because it's the video game industry there's always somebody cynical out there that's got to knock on people. Yeah, yeah, fuck that guy. Alright, do you guys have anything else you want to like, like topic wise that you wanted to bring up, or should we have final thoughts? I'm, I'm, I think I just gave mine. I'm spent. What do you think, good sir? I was very spent as well, but uh, um, I, I honestly I, I'm going back to what my kind of final thought was before, and it's uh, I guess a little bit what Jason just got done saying is just you know define yourself as who you think you are. You know, if you are playing Farmville twenty hours a week somehow. Uh, you got that massive farm. Yeah, you're a hor- hardcore gamer for you know, that specific game. You know, it's it's. He still can't say it. <laughs> it's like for that specific game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I didn't realize that, but um, yeah, you know, it's it's it's, you know, if you are comfortable calling yourself hardcore, then you know, I think you uh, maybe maybe you deserve the title because you you know are have no shame in saying it to anybody. You know. 
Yeah. Very good. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with, with a lot of what you guys are saying, too. It's It's like, I don't think people should worry about it like i do that all the time uh the the best i can do is try to like introduce you guys to and talk about a lot of the weird and obscure stuff i play uh yeah and stuff like and puppeteer i sold that to somebody based on your guy's review Hmm? what spec ops he'll he'll love you forever My my first day back back i sold the guy spec ops good based on our reviews never played the game <laughs> um, but I got some buddies that love this thing. Game of the year. <laughs> uh, yeah, and even some of the more obscure stuff, like like puppeteer stuff that I talk very very highly of. I really think it is one of the best games that has come out this I would year. I have to say, like Heavy Rain, definitely Beyond Two Souls. Uh, that's not a, a a core game that or a hardcore game uh, or a game that non hardcore gamers would pick up. That make any sense? No, Backwards not even. Hell. I have no idea what the fuck you were trying to get out. Uh, Quantum Dream Games. Um, I don't think that's a casual game to pick mm, up. I, I, I really quick. I, I, I know Tony's trying to wrap it up. I disagree. Really? Especially with Beyond Two Souls. Just I haven't touched the game. Mm-hmm. Based on what him and Brian have told me, like especially with the mobile version of it, the iPad mm-hmm. integration, it is made for casual gamers. True. Yeah. It's made Beyond for, some, it's made for somebody lot. who's like a hardcore gamer, and and your buddy comes over and goes, "What the hell are you doing?" Well, here you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's essentially why I know they made that for it, too, because I heard uh, Heavy Rain, number one thing people wanted was some kind of co-op functionality for sitting around. And so, I, again, I apologize. True. Probably a bad example, but yes, because I, I do know there was, you know, that's why there's an app for it for the second one. Burn! Okay, so um, I think that people, as long as they're happy with what they're doing, like like I am, like I know people laugh at some of the shit I play, or, or these guys give me crap, but they're doing it jokingly and lovingly. Uh, but Where's like evil, terrible. But like uh, I I don't ever let it bug me ever. I I just I just uh, what are you doing behind I'm, me? I'm waiting for Mark to give me a fist bump. Oh. There it goes. Now you should have a banner. Where's the flags? <laughs> but uh, you know I I don't. Used to be good. Shh. Not anymore. Five is good. <laughs> I'm trying. Finish. Can I talk? I'm <laughs> trying. I'm trying. Okay. Um, I think you should just be able to play whatever you want to play. And I, I never let it bother me. I don't know why other people do. Like, uh, like with the Vita in particular, like everybody bashes on that. I don't care. I, I think the thing is, I talk about it all the time. It's one of the greatest things that has ever happened to video gaming. I, I've been... The, the biggest spokesman for fucking PlayStation Plus and, and all these all these little obscure things. And, like, I don't care if nobody else likes them and I don't care if nobody else agrees with me. Uh, there's been a lot of blockbuster games that I talk very poorly of. Grand, Th- Grand Theft Auto V is my latest example where the whole industry likes it. And it's a good game, but I'm not, I'm not seeing what everyone else is seeing. And, and that's okay. I'm, I'm allowed to my opinion and everybody else is allowed to theirs. Uh... You shouldn't be so concerned with what everybody else is worried about. You should just enjoy what you want to enjoy. And I, I always do that to the fullest. Uh, there's a lot of big franchises that I enjoy a majority of them, like Mario. But uh, to me, there's there's a bunch of Marios that aren't good. And I'll put blinders on because I'm a Mario fan. There's bad Mario games. It's like that with every single series ever. Uh, uh, that's it, I think. It's just uh, enjoy what you want to enjoy. Don't don't worry so much about everybody else. Just say, no. Nope. All right. Uh, I would ground. I would love to hear what everybody thinks about this. Uh, so much. <laughs> Please comment on this one. Please. I would I would love to hear your guys' opinions. So uh, this has been episode ninety, part two. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Catch us next week, same time, same place. Also, we're gonna raffle off the brown potato. If you want it. <laughs> Just message us. We'll ship it it's out. It's all yours. All yours. <laughs>